The ship's lifeboat is the last chance of survival for its crew. It's literally our lifeline in the worst kind of situation. That's why everything inside and outside is to help keep the sailor alive for as long as possible. And lucky for us, our third mate Jeff said he'd take us along for his monthly inspection of the lifeboat. He said he'll show us some of the life-saving equipment and gear we have, how to properly get into a seat, and even show us the engine. So yeah, let's check out the lifeboat. Please mind the audio guys, the lifeboat was stowed behind the stack and it is very loud back here. I threw in some subtitles to better understand Jeff. Enjoy. Hello! Welcome to our free fall lifeboat. Uh, this is our main method of uh, abandoning ship that was ever needed. Obviously that's something that we don't want to do. Third mate on here. So this is our free fall lifeboat, 21 feet long, uh, fits 30 people. Uh, it's a tight fit, gets oddly hot in here. It's a lot of people in a small space. So obviously abandoning the ship is the last resort. Four pilots, lights, everything like that. Um, it's definitely a tight fit, for sure. This water is just your normal potable water, right? So uh, each one is um, one eighth of a US quart or 4.22 fluid ounces. On here, we have 96 liters worth of drinking water. So we will divvy that up uh, accordingly to how many people are on the, the, the lifeboat at that time. Uh, normally, we have a crew on here of 22 to 23 uh, persons depending on if we have cadets or anything like that. Uh, we also have ride-alongs, sometimes we have techs and other things like that that come on to work on diesel engines, cargo pumps, radar equipment, stuff like that. So uh, we have to have uh, that extra space in the boat. So uh, the ship can obviously carry more people than 30, but we legally can't because we can't fit more than 30 people into the lifeboat. Uh, these are your certified drinking cups. Uh, these are small enough that you're able to have uh, millimeters are marked, so your quantity on these are able to be marked. Drinking cups are required by Solas as well. Oh, I forgot we're at an angle. <laughs> God dang! All right, our food rations. So we have to eat. Uh, this is what we eat. Uh, this right here, there are 30 of these. So each seat gets one packet of food, right? So you have uh, there's 12 bricks in here of food. They're crackers, they're the correct term. They're about um, you know two inches by one inch. Um, you eat one and that is your meal, right? So you have 12 servings per container. Um, one serving is 200 calories. Uh, and that is what you have, right? So one bar uh, is 200 calories. One of the most important parts of coming onto a lifeboat is uh, once we've launched through our abandoned ship, the first thing we do is to take our seasickness pills. Uh, we have enough seasickness pills in here to last a couple days. Alright, so in here we have our life signal placard. This is required to be in the lifeboat. Flashlights, we make sure they work. Um, we also want to make sure of the battery expiration dates on the batteries of these. Um, like I said, the lifeboat gets checked every month, so I've done it in the past two months. Um, so in here, this is our pyro container. So we have everything in here from uh, rocket flares, parachute flares, uh, smoke canisters, and everything like that. Daytime smoke. Uh, 
and uh, we check our expiration dates and everything like that. So this one is good from 05 of 23. So this baby is a red rocket flare. So these are the ones that you see uh, probably if you've ever seen any type of uh, cinematography or anything like that. These are the ones that go up as a rocket. They kind of hang out in the air, burn, and then fizzle out. Here we have a jackknife. So a jackknife is a knife that pulls. Uh, so it's going to be your normal like bull type, a Swiss Army knife type of thing. Uh, you can see that this is a approved jackknife. It has the built-in can opener. Uh, can openers, can openers are another part of uh, Solap required materials. In here, you have a whistle. Uh, all of our life jackets and survival suits have whistles, uh, but it is required that you have a singular whistle separate in your Solap. In here, we have smaller can openers. Uh, the reason we have can openers is uh, part of our abandoned ship procedure is for the uh, storage department or the lovely people that make our delicious food to uh, bring more provisions, right? So we have water and food. Uh, food is a, a booster, I guess you could say. Uh, we have rations, but uh, it would be nice to have uh, actual food, right? So they can grab canned beans. have uh, mirrors. Uh, so this would be used to signal aircraft or other vessels during the daytime. It's actually extremely effective. The U.S. Coast Guard approved emergency fishing gear. So uh, everyone likes fresh sushi, so it doesn't mean you can't have it on your lifeboat after you abandon ship, right? So uh, these are in sealed packages. I can't really show you what's in here, but there's hooks, hand lines, uh, things like that. In here we have uh, three thermal protective gates. So thermal protective gates are going to be like those tin foil type blankets that you'll see people use to retain body heat. Is our searchlight. So we need an approved searchlight. Uh, as you can see, this just has your normal like 12 volt plug, right? So I'll show you where it plugs in on top in a little bit, but uh, your normal searchlight here. Um, one of the most important parts uh, of the lifeboat is your first aid kit. As you can see, it's probably sealed, right? So uh, we inspect that monthly to make sure that the uh, first aid kit is sealed. If it is broken, uh, we have to, uh, others to replace it. The, uh, there's things in here, aspirin, burn gel, uh, there's eye wash, uh, ammonia inhalants in case someone were to pass out, antiseptic towelettes. Uh, your normal stuff, bandages, band-aids, uh, everything that you would need uh, for uh, a small first aid. The uh, bailer uh, is just literally a scoop for our water. All right, so this is our sea anchor. So what a sea anchor is, is uh, everyone knows what an anchor on a boat is, uh, but uh, this vessel does not have an anchor on it. Um, so we have a sea anchor. So what um, this is, is it's a, just a large like canvas or flat rubber material, and it is a massive cone. So it's a massive cone shape. And uh, what this will do is it will let us throw it over the side, it will obviously connect it to the vessel, and we'll be able to stem the uh, currents because right? this thing's going to fill up with water, it'll create a lot of um, resistance and it'll slow the vessel down. Right? Because um, we have a finite amount of fuel in the lifeboat. Um, also, you can run into mechanical issues, everything like that. And if you're just floating free, drifting around with no resistance or no type of anchor or sea anchor, uh, you're going to um, you're going to run into some issues and get tossed around. So you can see it starts in the fatter area and comes down to the skinnier area. Uh, in here we have a toolbox, so uh, we have a diesel engine in the lifeboat. So uh, our engineers have a kit of supplies that they can need. Uh, we have oil filters, things like that. They have the instruction manual for the actual lifeboat engine itself. Our SART, our search and rescue uh, radar transponder. Uh, 
what these are meant for are um, boat notifying nearby vessels that the survival, that, um, the survival craft has been launched and you will uh, need assistance. So these get tested monthly, which we're going to do today. Um, and it shows up on the radar, so other vessels will have a clear, distinct way to know that there is a vessel in distress. So I'll show you the sit in the seats. Uh, keep in mind, I'm six feet tall, so I'm not massively tall. Um, and I'm very open. So you come down. Continuous belt, uh, uh, one continuous piece of belt, right? So this part here comes from here, it all comes together, and we have a latch down here. Slide that into, pull it tight. From there, you are restrained, right? So as you go down, you want to hold in front of you, press in front of you. As the light bulb drops, you push back in your seat, not in the seat. So, underneath these panels, we have our light bulb engine. So, our engine is a standard, fairly basic diesel engine. Uh, we have a uh, the tools can work on it as we talk about it, like that. We have a nice lovely label there to cross the check the coolant level, and then it goes back, and then you have the shaft, which goes to the um, Right there, you can see those are control cables for our gear selector, and you can follow this other blue wire to there. That is your um, throttle cable that comes down to the end. Uh, right here is these two cylinders on this side. And a cylinder on that side. That is the compressed air system on the life raft. So we are able to have a pressurized atmosphere within the life raft or the lifeboat, or, um, like that. And uh, that will prevent any type of toxic atmosphere, toxic gases, anything like that, from entering the lifeboat. Uh, uh, this right here, this is the coxswain seat. So this is going to be. Uh, in charge of the lifeboat uh, navigation once we launch. On our uh, lifeboat, this is the chief mate, so the chief mate is the one driving, and the captain is their co-worker here that is the uh, The way that this lifeboat is released is uh, via this uh, pump right here, right? So uh, right here you have a bypass valve on this little guy. So you would tighten that bypass valve, pull this pin, pump that handle, and uh, off you go. One thing that's super important that you want to make sure before you pull that is A, make sure everyone's strapped in and ready to go. B, make sure your back hatch and front hatch are secure. Uh, this thing literally turns to a submarine for half a second. So if you're fully underwater, don't want any increase of water in the light bulb before you pump this. Uh, Per the manual, it can take anywhere between 2 to 15 pumps, so you're on the edge of your seat the whole time that you're doing it. And right here we also have a compass, so this is a magnetic compass. Uh, you can see it's on a uh, gimbal type of uh, 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 bracket, so the chief mate can have it set however they want. Uh, on here it's fairly basic, we have obviously our security wheel. Uh, we have our switches for uh, lighting inside the lifeboat, outside the lifeboat, and then our navigation lights. Um, up here is our uh, engine control panel, so we have our switches to start and stop, which we'll be going over here shortly. We have your RPM indicator, your oil pressure, oil temperature indicator up there as well. And then right here you have your standard uh, vessel uh, gear selector and throttle all in one. Uh, right here it is our uh, water mist system uh, control valve. 
uh, that we'll be testing once we launch the light phone. So this will be um, open or closed. Right now it's in the closed position. And then when you open it, the uh, water gets dumped all over the side of the vessel. And a big shout out and thank you to Jeff and his tanker stash for bringing us into the lifeboat and showing us around. Also, be sure to check out the next video because next time we launch the lifeboat. If you enjoyed the video and you'd like to support the channel, please consider liking, subscribing, or sharing the video. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next one.